How do you test if a scientific journal or set of papers or conference is crap? We have this system that usually happens in science where discoveries get put into writing and that written document gets sent to a scientific paper. Many complicated sciencey things happen, including words like peer review, and eventually the paper puts out the research. They say, we stamp this, this stuff is decent. And the scientist says, I've done good science. Often these papers say, nah, we don't like this. But what if the paper isn't keeping its end of the bargain? What if they're doing a bad job? There are a lot of interesting and complicated tests to see about this. Testing for things such as bias towards particular results, for example. And even if the paper is doing their jobs okay, we can still find small flaws in human reason. And sometimes bad things get through by pretty much mistake. Research about research is a whole field. It's incredibly fascinating. For interesting problems with medical research and the more in-depth side of this, I'd recommend having a look at John Leonidas, who is one of the big figures in research about research. If you've heard the claim 90% of published research is wrong, that's an extrapolation from his work. He's the one who's really getting into this. However, at the other end of the scale, what if the paper is just really terrible? For example, what if they let anything through as long as the money rolls in? So some papers are funded by the person who submits a paper to them, paying them a fee for the privilege of being published in them. As you can expect, they have every reason to work as cheaply as possible and let anything through. If a paper is really bad, or a journal is terrible, or a conference will let anything be written into it, as long as it gets them the paycheck, I suppose, then we can do more than just this complicated research. We can do something simple and fun. We can send them obvious rubbish. And my favourite sort of obvious rubbish is computer-generated rubbish. Welcome to SciGen. As Wikipedia describes it, SciGen is a computer program that uses context-free grammar to randomly generate nonsense in the form of computer science research papers. All elements of the paper are formed, including graphs, diagrams, and citations. Created by scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, its stated aim is to maximise amusement rather than coherence. So what can we do? Well, if we think a paper or a conference is really terrible, we can put in a fake paper on, made by SciGen and see if they accept random gibberish. See if they do any reading of the thing at all. The 2005 World Multi-Conference on Systemics, Cybernetics and Informatics. Such a grand name. Clearly highbrow science is done there. Now they accept a paper made by SciGen called Router. A methodology for the typical unification of access points and redundancy. And that just got the ball rolling, since then many others have followed in the act. In fact, there's a wonderful article by Cyril and Dominic Lab called Duplicates and Fake Publications in the Scientific Literature. How many SciGen papers in computer science? It's seriously worth a read. What they do is create quite a clever software method to detect if a paper was made by SciGen using knowledge of how SciGen papers are drawn up to find them in the wild conference literature. For other interesting examples of garbage getting into scientific journals, Dr. Peter Van Plew submitted a paper to the International Journal of Advanced Computers Technology, which was entirely the phrase, get me off your fucking mailing list. The only reason it seems that it didn't get published was because in the end he decided not to give them any money. There's also Christoph Bartnick, who used iOS Autocomplete to write an article for the 2016 International Conference on Atomic and Nuclear Physics. Now, a lot of these were just complete garbage in journal, but I do have a soft spot for something else. A brief case report in the Me British Medical Journal. Now, case reports aren't scientific papers, they don't go through the same stringent tests and things to see if they make the journal. But the case report in the BMJ should really try to be well considered. What gets through? Cello scrotum. A complete garbage idea. A response to guitar nipple. A case report on a brazing of the nipple caused by playing guitar. In response, Dr Elaine Murphy put in a fake case report for cello scrotum. A malady that is pretty much impossible 
given where a cello sits. So it's not just articles and conference papers these things can get into. And even well-respected journals have to keep their eyes open. No, cellists do not get a scrotal injury from playing the cello. The BMJ dropped the ball. So have a look at these fake papers. You won't learn much, but they might make you laugh. And if you're a publisher, maybe don't let them in.